Suppose you throw a circle into a lake. It makes a splash, and then you begin having ripples move outward from that place of impact. Now, as you observe those ripples moving outward, you might be able to detect the rate at which those circles are expanding. Let's say they're expanding at a, at a rate of three feet per second. Given that knowledge, can we determine how quickly, how quickly the area enclosed by those circles is increasing? Let's think about this. We know that the area of a circle is given by pi times the radius squared. Although in this case, it's not just one fixed circle, the circle is expanding. So we should think that secretly, the area is actually some function of time. That, that over time, this, this area is getting larger and larger and larger. And likewise, you also know your radius is some, is some function of time. So although right here I just, I just put A and R, we should be thinking that A actually represents some function of time, and the R also represents some function of time. Well, since these are just functions, since the functions of time, we can ask, what, what is the derivative? What happens if we calculate the derivative of the area with respect to time? And what happens if we calculate the derivative of the radius with respect to time? The derivative of the area with respect to time tells you how quickly the, the, the area is increasing. That's exactly what we want to know. So, so this is our unknown. This is what we want to figure out. We're trying to figure out not what the area is, but how quickly the area is changing. That's what the derivative gives you. How about the derivative of the radius with respect to time? Well, that would tell you how quickly the radius is expanding. If you think you have some radius here of the circle, you wonder how quickly it's expanding. Well, that's just the three feet per second that was given to us at the beginning of the problem. Here, three feet per second is exactly the rate of change of the radius. So somehow we want to use this information about this rate of change, the rate of change of the radius, to figure out some information about the rate of change of the area. This is called a related rates problem. We have two different rates of change. One of them we know, one of them we don't know, and we want to figure out a way of relating those. Now our formula here relates the A with the R, the area with the radius. But how can we get a relationship between the derivative of the area and the derivative of the radius? To do that, we should take the derivative. How do we take the derivative? Well, we're going to think that these are both functions of R. And so what I'm going to do to this is I'm going to take the derivative of the whole thing with respect to T. This is implicit differentiation. So the derivative of A will just become whatever the derivative of A with respect to T is equals pi is a constant. Pi doesn't change over time. Pi is always the same thing. So we leave that as just pi. And then we take the derivative of r squared, remembering that r is secretly some function of time. So we need to do the power rule. We need to bring the 2 down to 2 pi r. And then by the chain rule, we need to multiply that by the derivative of r, whatever dr dt is. Now, we know what dr dt is. We were told that dr dt is 3 feet per second, so let's plug that in, and we get that the change in area over time will be given by just 2 times of dr dt, which is 3, so that's 6 pi r. Notice the change in area depends on your radius. For example, when your radius is, say, at 3 feet, so after 1 second, when the radius equals 3, you would have that your dA dt, your change in area over time, would be, plug in a 3 for your radius, it would be 18 pi. But, but if you would wait another second, when your radius goes up to 6, now your radius is 6, so you would have your dA dt, the change in your area, is 36 pi. What this is saying is, is if you keep expanding the radius at constant rate, the area will be growing faster and faster and faster. 
this should make intuitive sense. When you just have a small circle and, and you increase it by some amount, you, you can think about how much area has been added to that circle. Compared to when you have a larger circle and you increase it by the same amount, you can think a larger contribution of area was made. Okay, let's step back and think about what we just did. We were asked some question about a rate of change. How quickly is the area increasing? We were given some information about another rate of change, how quickly the radius was changing. Since we were given information about the radius and the area, we found a formula to relate those two values. Then we took the derivative to get a formula that involves the rate of change, the derivatives. We plugged in what we knew and we got our result and we could see how the result varied for different values of r. This is going to be the basic structure of these related rates problems. In the upcoming videos, we'll do a few more examples to help us get more comfortable with how these problems go.